All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine at Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from a lovely sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Maureen Metcalf, who's founder and CEO and board chair of the Innovative Leadership Institute. How are you doing, Maureen? Hi, I'm doing well, John. How about you? Good, good. And what part of the country are you in today? I am in rainy Columbus, Ohio, so I don't get the, the California sun that you're seeing. Yeah. Well, actually, it's the sun after the rain because we've had rain for a few days, which is uh, mm. strange here, which is not that common here, obviously, in, in San Diego. And obviously, as we were talking before we came on air, uh, the subject that we're going to talk about today is kind of timely, given everything that's going on in the world and with the with the virus, et cetera. And it's leadership behaviors to leverage disruption and strengthen your organization. So um, let's face it, sometimes more there is there is disruption that you cause yourself, like, you know, creative disruption or innovate. And then there mm -hmm. is disruption that just is long, is landed upon you like we have seen with the, the virus right now. So let's kind of start with that. Uh, in, when you're in a situation like we're all in today, uh, the, the, the temptation for leadership is to hunker down, right? Um, as opposed to look at, okay, how can we leverage the situation to strengthen the organization and actually come out of this stronger? Well, and, and exactly to your point, I think the best leaders are one you hunker down or somebody in the organization hunkers down and make sure that folks can work from home, make sure they're mm -hmm. staying on top of you know, all of the latest information coming from uh, whether it's the World Health Organization or your local governor who says um, you're now at shelter in place and you don't get to come to the office. So we need to make sure people have, before they leave the office, they've got computer setups, whether they take their yeah. desktop or they've got a, a laptop. They've, we've got some policies about VPN so that when we come back, you know, we haven't destroyed our, our computer system. And the executive team needs to also be thinking exactly as you've said, um, a week, two weeks, a month, six months from now, how do we emerge from this in a way that the week and the two weeks, we haven't gone out of business. And, mm -hmm. and six months from now, what have we changed to um, take advantage of the opportunity that presented itself? So, so mm -hmm. the business we, in, we are in may actually change in some cases because another opportunity presented itself. Yeah, and I think the other uh, the other part is you look at things like this, and even um, okay, d this is a bit different from say the dot com implosion, and then the you know nine eleven, and then the financial crisis. But I think the one thing that the one commonality throughout all of those is some things go back to normal, but not everything goes back. So nothing is ever one hundred percent the the same. And I think this time we're probably going to see more dramatic change than we've probably seen even in those other other disruptions. So how much should a, a, a leadership be looking at, okay, what are the things that we think are going to stay the same and we need to stabilize those, et cetera? And what are the things that we need to start looking at the changes and how we're best positioned to, to, to adapt or take advantage of those? Uh, I can say that I spend most of my time thinking about that right now. So, mm. so in, when we look at our competency model, uh, one of the seven competencies is 360 degree thinker or critical thinker. I am continually looking across the system, given what information I have today, tomorrow, the next day, to, to one, figure out where, given the cash I have, that cash flow is mm -hmm. changing for almost everybody right now. Yep. So for mm -hmm. if you're a hospital, your cash is going up. But the expectations, do I have enough ventilators, is also going up. So I need to be yeah. looking at um, preserving or investing properly. But then again, to your point, this will change. And, and we talked before we came on about remote working. Mm -hmm. How do we think about physical co-location? How do we think yeah. about the investment we make in technology that allows people to collaborate whether they're in the office or not? So yeah. um cloud computing, all again in the technology space, um, that will allow us to remain um, connected and working. And there is no reason in this era that for many white collar office workers, we don't mm -hmm. have remote working capabilities. 
I, I realize yeah. if you're cooking fries at McDonald's, you can't do that in your living room. Sure, sure. But I think, as you say, I mean, if you're a white collar knowledge worker or whatever, you should, you know, your company should be set up for this. It should be relatively easy to transition over. But I think there's also changes coming now, as you say, is addressing the whole idea going forward of whether co-location in buildings is the optimum way to go. And, and also, I think then there's, so it's not just on the leadership side, then it's also, isn't it, on the employee side or the individual side, you maybe you have to think in the future, okay, when you're renting or buying an apartment or a house or whatever, maybe you have to start thinking, okay, I need a, I need one of the considerations is not just the bedroom, but or whatever, it's actually a space where I can work um, efficiently and effectively and I can be, you know, if you like, segregated there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. Uh, if we are moving forward where the company used to bear the cost of giving me an office, that's now my cost. If I have to have a bigger apartment or condo or home that, it, and for those of us fortunate enough to have homes that have an extra bedroom, that's great. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have that. And now when you have two, two members of a household or more working from home, yeah. uh, we, we were on a, a Zoom call this morning and uh, one of our people, I could tell she was sitting on her bed uh, working. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah long term that may not be optimal because she may not feel as productive mm -hmm. no absolutely and and up to now some of the things that mitigated that have been you know shared workspaces and you know we work facilities and all of that but again mm -hmm. you know, there's some question about whether people will feel comfortable doing doing that but i think there are things that we need to certainly uh, considerations on on both sides that that we need to address um and I think this uh, this presents a, a great opportunity disruption, a great opportunity to look at the efficiency of how you collaborate, how you communicate, mm -hmm. how you communicate your processes. Because it, let's face it, in when when things are going okay, we tend to not bother really yeah. looking yeah. at our processes and all. Everything's fine. But this is a good time, and I guess disruption is always a good time to start looking at how you can be more efficient. You know, it's it's interesting the idea of efficiency. Um, I, I've been having a lot of conversations over the last few days about organizations that had leaned out all um, slack. And mm -hmm. now that uh, something goes off the rails, whether it's um, a supplier closes down or uh, a snowstorm in Ohio, which we have, um, <laughs> you know, that, that you have to plan that. Uh, I don't know that the proper term is slack, but you've got to plan extra give in the system so that when something doesn't work well, uh, you still stay in business. And yet we've worked very hard to be efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's an interesting point. That's a really good point that you brought up because I do think there's, I always find that there are, there are, there are often two types of organization. There's the highly structured and the processes are all down. But as you say, there's a certain inflexibility maybe built in there and then yeah. there's the other organizations that are a little bit way too loose and they're great they're great at crisis management so you know there's probably organizations out there who do fantastic in crisis management right now but they won't learn the lessons yeah they will they will just be i worked for a company one time and i have to say that the leadership were just phenomenal at crisis management every time things blew up they were in they wow the, the customers they get everything back on track but never but we never Learned, they never learned any lessons, nothing ever changed. And yeah, six months later, they'd be flying back in to do another crisis intervention. Yeah, we call that the firefighter putting out their own fires. Mm -hmm. um, and then companies often reward them for being such good firefighters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you look around and they've got a bunch of matches in their office. Yeah, yeah. And they enjoy it. I mean, oh. this is what they love. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, uh, and it, there is value to having a fixer on your team. If your team is all fixers, then yeah. you need someone who's good at operations. So, uh, so what are some of the challenges from a leadership point of view, right? Where today I am suddenly faced with this whole new world. I've got a distributed team that I never had before, and I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, maybe I'm used to managing in a particular way, and now I have got to be um, flexible or come up with new. What's the best way of starting the process of adapting and understanding how I should lead in this circumstance? 
So we have a competency model that looks at seven mm-hmm. specific mindsets and behaviors. And I say the mindset because, it, you know, we use terms like leaders eat last. Well, that's a nice rule, but it's not yeah. practical. And the point isn't when you eat, it, it's that you um, consider the needs of your people and you put them mm-hmm. on par with your own. So the mission is accomplished. So yeah. having a mindset of professional humility means I understand when to give credit and when to take credit. Because often um, when I'm public facing, if, I, if I'm not seen as the person in charge as the CEO, right. that diminishes the credibility of the firm. So, sure. so the mindset of humility is, is not only being humble, but knowing how, how to balance humility with um, appropriate visibility. Right, so, right. What I would say is understand the competencies uh, and where I am now and where I need to be. And even for people who've evaluated those a month ago, I'd look at them again and say, okay, what does humility mean to be today? Um, commitment to right action and making tough decisions. Yeah, I, One of my clients laid off a, a almost uh, probably 25% of his team this right. week. Uh, that that is, you know, we need to stay in business. We need to continue mm-hmm. to serve our customers. But boy, these people are like family, and yeah, yeah. Um, exiting family members is in- incredibly difficult. How do we define right action and and by right not just throwing people off the bus and running them over, but how do we? help them find an appropriate landing. What, what's the um, severance? How do we connect them with unemployment mm-hmm. resources and things? So things that we did when we weren't making tough decisions unexpectedly, that commitment to yeah. right action may not have been foremost in our minds. Mm-hmm. And one of the others is inspiring followership. So mm-hmm. How do I act to build trust in a time of a crisis? It, yeah, and and it's in, it's interesting because the situation that you just talked about there, because it is, and I have been in that situation myself, unfortunately, and I've had to do that. And it's the the hardest thing to do. Okay, if you have to let somebody go for poor performance or just mm-hmm. whatever, that's one thing. But when you have to let people go because literally, when it's a cost saving exercise and you have to do it, and they haven't done anything wrong, they just unfortunately are in the wrong job at the wrong time right or they're the newest and, one on or they're the newest one on or whatever the situation is but it's through largely through it's through no fault of their own right mm-hmm. uh, and what you're saying is so there's two things so you have to do that you have to make those tough decisions and do that and as you say at the same time you have to try try and inspire the other people to redouble their efforts and move on but then those other people still in the back of their minds are wondering am i next right so it's such mm-hmm. a difficult balancing act right Am I next or why did I get to stay because that person yeah. has family and I don't or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, there's there's the guilt. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, again, back to your comment about efficiency, there is process efficiency, but we're also working with humans with emotions mm-hmm. and fears. And especially right now, we've got people who are really afraid. How do we yeah. help um, afraid for their jobs, afraid for their health, afraid for they just don't know what's going on? Um giving that extra amount of care really speaks to the inspiring followership. Why do I want to work for you? Um, right. If, when the labor, you know, when all this stuff passes and we hit the next tight labor market, if you treated me badly, I may stay now because I have to, yeah. but as soon as this thing lightens up, I'm out the door. How we treat people in times of crisis really says who we are. Yeah, and is there, I mean, of your, your competency model, is, are there competencies that are particularly critical to have right now that are more important than maybe the other ones, or are they still, is it still a, a, a relatively even spread? So let me run through them, and I'll ask you, yeah. professional humility. Um, mm-hmm. So giving credit, taking credit, uh, so it is about, you know, that appearance yeah. of it, sharing mm-hmm opportunity. Second is unwavering commitment to right action, making the tough decisions. 
360 degree sinker, I think second and third order impacts, that's foundational right now. Yes, absolutely. Um, intellectually uh, curious and versatile. It, and so uh, I read an article a couple of days ago about, um, this is obviously a health issue, but mm -hmm. how is that connected to the health of the financial markets? That, sure. that um, intellectual versatility that I am not just staying in my lane, because if I'm running a company, mm -hmm. my lane is big this time. Right, um, right. Uh, highly authentic and reflective. To me, that's always important. I, thinking yeah. about how, what am I doing that's impacting others? And if I get it wrong, I need to immediately own my mistakes. Mm -hmm. And with right. imperfect information, there are going to be mistakes. I need to own them and I need to restore the balance. Yeah, and I, and I, think, and I think right now, I mean, I think uh, obviously people want uh, strong leadership. They want authenticity they want to be able to trust you but i think i think above all they want somebody who who looks like they're decisive and in in control mm -hmm. as much as they can be and i think that's the other part is one of the things that i used to um i used to say to people especially at times of crisis like i say if you ask me a question if i know the answer to it i will tell you the only reason i won't tell you is either I don't know the answer or I'm prohibited somehow by giving you that mm -hmm. information. Right? And I think just, and that's not to say that, and, and what I always try to do is just say, that's me being completely honest, right? There are times when I either won't know the answer or I can't give you the answer, but otherwise I will give you a straight answer. And I think that's what, I think people appreciate that um, because maybe some of your people come to you and say, oh, is my job safe? And at the end of the day, you have to say, as of now it is, yeah. But I can't, I can't, enough. but I can't, I can't make any predictions beyond that. Yeah. And that's that inspiring followership, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That I tell you what I know, uh, again, within legal and appropriate guidelines. Yeah. Uh, um, and that I own, I own making the decisions and I own that I'm at this point, everyone's making decisions with imperfect information. We mm -hmm. really yeah. have no idea what's going to happen next week but we can't do nothing. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the other thing I would say in that inspiring followership is demonstrate some grace. Do mm -hmm. not assault people, um, yeah. assume they're doing, you know, most people are really doing the best they can right now. Yeah. And, and if you're already overwhelmed and um, just not, just barely getting along, a crisis like this is, is gonna throw you into a spiral. We need mm -hmm. to help each other as neighbors and communities and colleagues yeah. to get through this. Yeah, and I think yeah, and I think that's it. And I think that's one of the key for the kind of leaders that I've always admired are the ones who you know, have a sense of calm, but not 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 uh, not naive calm, right? Mm -hmm. You know that they're they're fully aware of the gravity of the situation, but they don't see the benefit of panicking or getting too worked up so the, the the calmness and then as you said you know the decisiveness and as you said as well is just saying this here's the next best things we can do they may mm -hmm. not be the right things but this we have to do something to keep moving things forward mm -hmm. and i think that sense of calmness can also help people who as you described can already be you know teetering on the edge yeah the the how do we inspire people? And this idea that I make the smallest decision possible mm -hmm. each day. And because this crisis is changing each day, we really do need to be um, in, in motion. But I, I'm deciding on a day-to-day -day basis in some cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I say, I mean, at a time like this is, yeah, you know, obviously be informed because you want to know what's going on, but don't be obsessive. Because mm -hmm. I think that's because some, you know, unfortunately, or fortunately, we have such instant access to so much information and not all of it is correct either. But we can certainly people can get lost in all of that. And I think uh, I, I, I think there comes a point and I've even noticed it myself in conversations over the last couple of days where you can see where everybody's informed, but maybe they don't want to talk about it all the time. So. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the other thing is that you don't have to talk about being in a crisis. Even when you're in a crisis, you don't have to talk about it constantly. Yeah, finding the good. 
you know, this mm -hmm. will create opportunities. And yeah. I realize it's going to create catastrophe. If you're living on the margin, this is bad. Sure. But for a lot of people, it is an opportunity to step back, reframe what they're doing, rethink about some parts of their lives and really um, take different steps going forward. And those often the, the disorienting times create the biggest opportunities for us as individuals and companies to recalibrate. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's a great note to end on because I do think you're hundred percent correct. I think these it's when the crisis is unfolding, it's hard to see. Um, but often it, it's like, it's like after a storm, you know, you sometimes see more clearly. And I think after a disruption like this, uh, it'll bring a lot of clarity, both to businesses and leaders and, and individuals as well. I mean, it's always a great time to even um, revisit your motivation for doing what you do. Yeah, and that's a great note. As as people close, why are you doing this? It, yeah. And what does bring you joy in in those precious days and years and such of our lives? How do we how do we make it valuable? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been fantastic. Uh, Maureen Metcalf, uh, founder, CEO, board chair of the Innovative Leadership Institute. Uh, as I said, great timely, timely subject. All of uh, Maureen's and the uh, Institute's information will be in her contributor bio uh, below this. But before we go, do you want to tell some people just a little bit more about yourself and what you guys do? Sure. Um, we help elevate the quality of leadership at, across the world and then help leaders transform their organization. So I can't, they're so intermingled. I can't transform myself without changing my organization. Mm -hmm. And then frankly, I'm not going to be very good at changing my organization without looking in the mirror and figuring out where I have a superpower and where I am um, the dead weight in the process. So, so um, if, and all of us have those opportunities where we're brilliant and uh, mm -hmm. we need to shine in those spaces. And we all have times where we're not. And, and so I just encourage everyone. I know that, that we're so focused right now on, on the crisis we're facing it, to take the opportunity to reflect and consider what are your biggest gifts and how do you mm -hmm. um, contribute to, the, to your families and your communities and your businesses going forward. Yeah, no, I think that that's fantastic. Yeah, we, um, I think that's a great time to, to, it is a great time to self reflect. And as you make it through this, is to really ask yourself, you know, that, that life and circumstances are, are precarious, as we can see right now, and they're unpredictable. So it's always, a, it's a good time to reflect on what do you really want to do with your, with your life? What changes do you want to make in your life? How do you want to make your life more? Yeah, how do you want to get more out of what you're doing, regardless of, of what that is? John, thank you. It's just, it's an honor to be included on your show. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online and Sales Magazine and Pipeline and CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. And hopefully under better okay. circumstances. Yeah.